On October 11th at 6 p.m., Occupy Sacramento officially made its presence known to the city council during its regularly scheduled meeting. First rallying outside, occupation supporters flooded the meeting and many gave testimony to share their perspectives on the record. But even after opening this dialogue with our elected officials, we continued to be arrested for staying in the park after the extended hours, 11 p.m. on weekdays, midnight on weekends. While our occupation continued to grow, organize, and evolve over the next week, Occupy Sacramento continues to have the extra daily tasks of setting up and breaking down our entire infrastructure and taking turns spending nights in the jail three blocks away from Cesar Chavez Park. Activist hero Cindy Sheehan of nearby Vacaville has also joined Occupy Sacramento and was arrested alongside fellow occupiers last Saturday night, October 15th to 16th, 910. Jump to October 18th, 6 p.m. With around 250 Occupy Sacramento po- protesters present for the meeting, 40 citizen speakers shared their perspective with the Sacramento City Council. Here are just a few minutes worth of highlights. And to date, we've arrested 57, uh, we've made 57 arrests. Of that, 13 individuals have been arrested more than once. And there is long-standing jurisprudence that does permit government, and in this case the city, to adopt ordinances that may tend to infringe upon the, the rights of, uh, to assemble and speak. In Hague versus CIO, CIO in 1939, this was another Supreme Court case over whether an ordinance requiring a permit for public assembly or in upon the public streets, highways, public parks, or public buildings of the city is void on its face. Justice Roberts stated, whenever the title of streets and parks may rest, they have immemorially been held in trust for the use of the public, and time out of mind have been used for purposes of assembly, communicating through thoughts thoughts between citizens and discussing public questions. As much good as we've done, um, I would have expected most of you to be out there to talk with us, or at least to meet the attention we've had for you guys to come out, and not so much for you, Mayor, to speak out against us. Um, I'm embarrassed for you in that matter. Therefore, members of the City Council, what is your argument? That it is necessary to infringe on this Assembly's constitutionally protected human liberties to enforce an unlawfully applied statute? If so, that is not only tyranny, but also treason. I'm here to speak on the positive effects that Occupy Sacramento has already had on Sacramento in our less than two weeks of existence in the park across the street from here. I've seen homeless people show up and come to learn American history. I've seen homeless people come up and ask to learn new skills to come out and uh, something that they can go and get a job with. I've seen a homeless man whose birthday was today come up from being in a hopeless situation to running our entire our entire donation collection system and our entire food system with just sheer effort and desire to be useful. Quickly is if you are supporting um, Occupy Sacramento, can you all just stand so we can see who everybody is here? That would be everybody in the council chambers. All right, as well as a number of people outside. Okay, have a seat, thank you very much. So we're gonna again try to get through as many speakers as we can, but know that everybody in here got a chance to at least let yourselves be, be known and seen here today. I know that I alone and morally responsible for everything that I do. And I prefer liberty with danger than peace with slavery. History has shown a patriot must always be ready to de- defend his country against his government. Because we now live in a world in which politics has replaced philosophy. We're in the fierce urgency of now. Yes, sir. We have love on the front line, and love on the front line is a dangerous way to live. Because in the end, no one wins. If we look around the nation today and around the world, there is something going on. The people have been hoodwinked. They have been led astray. I got arrested 
on Saturday night in Cesar Chavez Park. It was during a peaceful protest. The Sacramento PD called it a riot. It was the most boring and peaceful riot I have ever seen. And I'm here tonight, and I came all the way from Vacaville because I don't believe the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution stops at the borders of Sacramento. This movement is growing, and it's not going to go away, no matter how much it's oppressed. So you might as well start supporting it. Yes. I'm here to talk about how the council might meet the city's needs for keeping the peace and ensuring public safety and financial sustainability, while also meeting the citizens' needs for strong and sustained peaceful assembly and petition of our government for redress of our grievances. I do believe a win-win solution is possible. Good evening. There is no way for the vast majority of people to petition our government for redress of grievances other than what we are doing across this country and now the world. We have phoned, emailed, faxed, and mailed letters. We have lobbied our representatives in the White House, and all of our concerns end up in the same landfill of contempt. Council members, I have no doubt in my mind that you share these same concerns. So why not join us? Why not support us? Occupy Sacramento is the first committee to address a political body, a feat that symbolizes our strength as a community. Sacramento, the capital of California, has the potential to leave the West Coast and co-creating a sustainable society. Council, I leave you with a simple question. If you do not represent us, American citizens, who do you represent? In particular, October 6th, October 8th, and October 15th, the nonviolent civil disobedience of a handful of peaceful demonstrators has been met by what can only be described as an overwhelming force of 70 to 80 police officers most in riot gear and armed with billy clubs. Last Saturday night alone, I counted some 36 squad cars, two police vans, and two paddy wagons. All of this in the face of a tiny group of peaceful citizens who, I promise you, would have allowed themselves to be captured and detained by a single spool of thread. <laughs> Let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, you're hunting quail with hand grenades. Now, either this is someone's idea of a measured response to a perceived th threat, or it's nothing but political theater. If it's the former, it is seriously misguided and should be seen for the profligate waste of taxpayer dollars that it is. If it is the latter, however, I say by all means let the show go on. Numerous national polls have shown that among those folks who are aware of the 99% movement, the overwhelming majority approve of what we are doing, and with more Americans becoming aware of it with each passing day, I can only conclude that time is on our side. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. I'm here to explain that a great awakening is happening, and millions of people are finally proclaiming this is not who they are. These people of hope are crying out to the hearts of others to reach inside themselves and evolve. These people have done the very difficult spiritual work to transcend their own conditionings and look inside themselves to ask what will truly fulfill them. And they found the only thing that can truly satisfy us and alleviate the disease of desire and endless consumption is love. And not just love for ourselves and our families. This love is for life itself, for the life of our planet, our species, and all other systems on Earth. When I see 36 police cars, two paddy wagons, and two CSI SUVs pull up to block off two streets and shut down a peaceful assembly, my heart sinks. And my suspicions that things are not what they seem behind the curtain are reaffirmed. This movement calls for a great organization and logistics team to effectively educate and inform the people what is truly happening in this country. And having to leave and come back, break down and set up and essentially start from scratch the next day is hindering our rights to be able to connect and share with our community and to make it easy to assemble and speak together democratically about the changes we would like to see within our government. The city should be respecting our rights, not taking them away, and not wasting the time of our police who force us to leave the public park in a time when we need to utilize the space to better our country. Like we chanted to the police as they surrounded us in the park, this is not a riot. It's a right. Thank you. Um, I was arrested alongside uh, Cindy on Saturday, and I saw the strength in these people, and I was moved to occupy as well. And um, I will be out there again this evening. So if you choose to arrest me again, I will go. Thank you. Thanks, Russell. Scott? When I was young, my mother taught me to speak truth to power. She also taught me that in the position of power, it's very important that you listen to the truth. 
the truth has been spoken really clearly here, but there's some more truths involved. Okay, there's a whole bunch. 66% on a KCRA, a KCRA poll is in favor of this. 87% on a Reuters poll is in favor of this. And when it comes right down to it, if that many people are in favor of this and you guys are not in favor of this, then there's going to be a former assembly or council person and a former mayor on your names and a former city manager on your names. There is no doubt about this. Just be very clear in this very honest and total true discourse. The people are behind this. We will not stop. Never. It will continue. It will grow. It will get bigger. And it will never, ever stop.